more campaign stops, more interviews, I would do it. But I can't ask our supporters to volunteer their time and donate their resources if we don't have a clear path to victory. Accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. I'm proud to have delivered on 100% of my promises, and I will not stop now. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. They watch his presidency get stymied by relentless resistance, and they see Democrats using lawfare this day to attack him. Well, I've had disagreements with Donald Trump, such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear, a repackage formed of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. The days of putting Americans last, of kowtowing to large corporations, of caving to woke ideology are over. I thank all of our passionate supporters who have stood by us through it all, that we had people volunteer to come to Iowa in the middle of a blizzard to knock on doors and make phone calls touched us dearly. No candidate had more thrown at him, but no candidate had so many committed volunteers and staff. Finally, I wanna thank my wife, Casey, and our kids, Madison, Mason, and Mamie. Casey's gone far above and beyond in her support for our campaign and for our cause. She's not only a great wife and mother, she's a great American who cares deeply about the future of the country that our kids will inherit. Our kids have seen and done a lot on the trail from playing on the famed Field of Dreams baseball site in Iowa to making their first snowman in New Hampshire. They are one of the reasons we fight so hard for what we believe in. Winston. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is Wayne Dupree, and you are looking at the Wayne Dupree Podcast, along with my awesome co-host, the godfather of conservative radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, Wayne and Jason, and ladies and gentlemen, just glad to be here on this beautiful brand new week. And then we also have Mr. Jason Robbins from Muslim Soda. What's up, Jay? Happy Monday, everybody! What an exciting weekend. I can't wait to break down the failure that was the Ron DeSantis campaign. <laughs> yeah. They don't. Like, if you don't know and you just find it out, Ron DeSantis has left the campaign. He's gone. He's none. Well, actually not gone. I mean, he suspended his campaign. How do, how do, what does that mean to you when somebody suspends a campaign? Well, it's kind of the same as when Ron DeSantis calls Nikki Haley a corporatist. You know, it's, it's like, really? <laughs> He, he's not going anywhere. You'll see him. He's going to try to rebuild now. He's got three years. I guess suspend means you can still leave it open to come back in or something. I don't know. That's like a relatively new term, I think. What do you, what, uh, you think, uh, Jason, you think he um, he's still waiting in the wings? He's he waiting for that phone call just in case? You know, everything happens for a reason and and there's no mistakes on these prepared the these prepared statements. He did not drop out. He suspended his campaign and that was done intentionally. Now you can speculate why he did that. And I mean that'll be part of what we'll talk about today, but yeah, he he just I mean it was a very strange choice of words to say I suspend my campaign not you know, I dropped out or that kind of thing. You know, um, yeah, we're yeah, we're gonna be touching on that for the first part of the show because um I think I think I was a little bit right. I think I was kind of right about that. 
on it. I mean, but I, I did think he was going to drop out if past South Carolina, though. I didn't know if he was going to make it to Super Tuesday, but I was like, man, if he comes in third in Iowa, because I knew he was looking bad in New Hampshire, and I know, and I know he's going to be third in South Carolina. He must be really getting bad in South Carolina too for him to do that right now. He ran out because, of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which also throws me to this, Hutch. He says, uh, "I had fifty million dollars thrown at me and stuff." Yeah, but you had two hundred dollars just given to you. <laughs> two hundred million. Well, yeah, yeah. You had two hundred million given to you. So I mean, you can complain. And I know you're stealing that from Donald Trump, just like you stole the uh, promises made, promises kept. But I'm glad you're going back to South Carolina. I mean, um, I'm I'm glad that you're going back to Florida because most of the things that you were talking about there out on the road, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the things that you were talking about out on the road that you had passed legislation, most of that stuff has come back to roost. There's a whole lot of court decisions that got I mean, that overturned what you were trying to do. Am I right, Jason? Yeah, it, it's funny we've been talking about that. I mean, if you are somebody in Florida who last fall said, I'm going to support Ron DeSantis. Meanwhile, now you know the whole time they were just funneling money for his presidential run. And as soon as he ran, he like opened up shop in Iowa. I think he spent more nights in Iowa than Florida for the first six months of his term. You got to be sitting there looking around your state going, we really could have used a governor. Like that's why we elected a governor. And that that's kind of been a foundational problem for me with this whole DeSantis campaign is, you know, if you're going to do that, at least tell your voters like, Hey, I'm going to be running for president. You know, it's going to have the resigned run law that was in place and, and that, but yeah, I don't know how, how the average citizen in Florida isn't mad as hell. Like where the hell's our governor been? Cause he's getting his ass kicked by Disney. Now the book stuff, the, the social policies he put in, they just lost a house seat for the state yep. house yep. that had been yep. a long tenured Republican one. Like, yeah, it turns out a state needs a governor, you know? You know, that's, that's right. And, and there's a couple of things that really get me about this. Um, one is you notice the poison pill in his little uh, announcement there. He hung the entire COVID operation on Trump right. on his way out. If you know, that's a big deal. Cause that, cause that battle's coming. Uh, but we knew that was going to happen. But the thing that gets me is the geniuses on our side. As soon as this guy drops out and Vivek drops out, all of a sudden they want to put these traitors in my foxhole. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't understand I, that myself. I can't stand that, man. That They come yeah, out like, like the Sanus is this big patriotic conservative MAGA red flag idiot. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and Vivek, we don't know anything about Vivek. You yeah. show me 20 years history on Vivek. And I'll consider him. But that guy, you know, poof, came right in. You know, I watched um, uh, Matt Gates come out there and say, "Yeah, I, yeah, I, we, um, if he, if he um, suspends and he endorses Trump, yeah, I welcome him back in the camp." I was like, "But Jason, Jason, you spoke on this, and it's like, yeah, okay, fine, you can come back in the camp, but you got to work the kitchen. You know, you got to, you got to take out the trash. You got to sweep up the grass. You got to rake. You know." You got to do some stuff that we see that that you are that your intentions are the right intentions because we don't want. I mean, we've we've seen what saboteurs look like in right after the 2016 election. Yeah, I was going to say that want. there's in the camp and there's in the camp, right. and you know what? We'll, we'll let you back on the base. And like Wayne said, you want to go clean the latrines? You want to go do that stuff? Okay, like like. We know we need you to win this war, but yeah, you're not getting into the into the commander's tent. Like, no, 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 no. You, it's like it's like Iraq. We'll let yep. the third country nationals in, but but a GI is going to be following your every move with a rifle. Right. Yeah, we are not trusting you. That is for no. certain. But so many do. So many do. I mean, that, that's why my voice raised a little bit on that last. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't imagine this. It's like let's shoot ourselves. Right. We do this over and over and over, and we get convinced to do it by people like DeSantis and Christie and Nikki Haley and everybody else. Um, it, we're done with that. We're done. With, if you got your credentials through the Republican National Committee, you're on the bench. Right. 
You know, I saw um, what's his name? Um, Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh D'Souza was pushing Ron DeSantis for VP. I'm like, you must be out your mind. You must be out your mind. Why don't we just uh, get Mike Pence? Let's just get Mike Pence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. might as well. You might. I mean, at least at, at least you know where Mike Pence stands. I mean, to me, and this is both of you. To me, that that uh, that suspension uh, speech was backhanded. Um, he said, "Well, it looked. I mean, and I'm paraphrasing though, but." Well, it looks like the American people want Donald Trump, the person that really didn't do this and do that and do that. And this. I'm like, that's a little whiny bitch type of response lie, there. I was oh, like, yeah. I can't believe he did that. I mean, he he didn't need he didn't really need to put that in. And him putting that in will tell you that he. I mean, even if Donald Trump went to him and asked him for VP, he he don't want to be VP. If you're gonna put that into your statement, you ain't gonna put that. No, because. You put that out now, and the media is going to hound you on it if you decide that you want some type of spot within. Yeah, but you said during your suspension, well, you know, well, they didn't want me, so I guess they want him. Sound like a, sound like a little mean girl response, Jason. Well, I, I gotta say the the fear I have, and I think a lot of people on the MAGA side is there are two parties. There is the establishment. Yeah, we're Rhino Skelly. Oh, <laughs> my God. Christ. There's the establishment Republican Party, and then there's the MAGA wing of the party. And we know that's two different parties trying to function together to win the election or to whatever <laughs> they're going to do. But the established, our fear on the MAGA side is that Trump's going to pick somebody from the establishment side as vice president, like they did with Mike Pence, to appease the big money donors and get the support, that kind of thing. And, and this time, personally, no, I want him to pick a MAGA person. Like we had somebody in the chat say, Clay Higgins, down with Clay Higgins. Carrie Lake, down with Carrie Lake. Byron Donalds, go with any of those. Did you see Byron Donalds endorse C.J. Pearson for representative in Georgia? Yeah. <laughs> He's grown. He's a good, I'll, I'll listen to him talk. I never heard him. I haven't heard him since he was a little kid. Right. Um, <laughs> I, nerve. I, knew I was going to say, is he is he old enough to drink yet? Like, must be. Oh my god, he don't look the same. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, I mean, I've seen some crazy endorsements of late too. Myself, I've seen some crazy endorsements out there, which which should have you a, a moment of pause. I understand the coalescing. I understand the circling the wagons and different things like that. But that, I mean, Nancy Mace just came out and endorsed Donald Trump. Seriously, I don't want your endorsement. I I, I really don't. I know. I mean, I, I know we who got, you are, Nancy. You're right, and and you know that is you know so key, is so key, and so important. If you look at the overwhelming majority of this country, Trump doesn't need these voters. Right. right. You're going to see something on Tuesday. It's going to blow your mind, in my opinion. And I tell you who he's going to pick for vice president. I've, I've, I got it halfway figured out, I think. Talk to me. New York you want City. To do it now? Somebody from huh? New York City. Lee Zeldin. Seb Gorker <laughs> came out and said he's going to pick somebody from New York City politics. So you got Ben Couric or Rudy Giuliani. Think of people that are in New York City. And man, that police commissioner, I'll take him. Couric, I forget it. What's his name? The, the guy that's always coming out about Terry, he was a uh, uh, Bernie Kirker. I, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that guy. What somebody like that? Another scrapper. That's what we need, in my opinion. Someone I don't like want. Any, I don't want any of these. I don't want any of these national people. I don't want Tim Scott. None of those guys. I, well, I, mean, I don't want any of them. I say this. <laughs> yeah, I, that no is coming now too. The recently engaged Tim Scott. Yeah, the, I'm not gay, Tim Scott. Look, if <laughs> hey Tim, if you did that because he you thought that uh you were gonna be vice president and it doesn't happen to be you, you made a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and, for you, and for you to wait this long for a woman like that, yeah, you're not gay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Um Tim, Tim, buddy, <laughs> bro, uh <laughs> Home skillet. <laughs> <laughs> home slice. 
Um, I kind of felt honestly, in, until I saw it. Well, actually, that the 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 announcement kind of backed up what I was thinking because when I saw him up there endorsing Donald Trump in New Hampshire, I was like, why is South Carolina dude up there in New Hampshire? Hmm. I was like, I wonder. I wonder if he's gonna. But then I start. I but then I saw at least Stefanik, and I'm like, President, please don't make at least Stefanik. Please look at, don't go look at their money and see who paid for the ticket. It's probably Raytheon, right? Either way, well, I mean, and they want somebody in the war machine up there, boy. And and you know what, too, I'm probably I'm probably nobody. I'm probably nobody to many people. But I'll say this: you pick at least. I'm gonna worry a little bit. I mean, I'm gonna worry a lot. I, I, I'm serious. I can't. I can't win the lease. I can't wit Ron. I, and and I really can't with um, Vivek fanboy. I can't. I can't. I can see him as press secretary, but not vice president. And I can't with Tim Scott. I can't because Tim Scott is to me is establishment. Absolutely. Okay. He's Tim worse Scott than is established. That was Trey Gowdy's best friend. Yep. I. I need somebody who is MAGA, but outside of politics. I need somebody who, <laughs> and please don't take this wrong. I need somebody who Trump can groom in his, in his likeness. And I Joe Rogan. No. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> he, 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 wait, he's shorter than DeSantis. But, um, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we need, we need somebody that has built something that can grow something that has the background in bit background in business too. And that can stand, um, that can stand up against the media. Now, guess what? I'm not even saying Christy Noem either. I'm not, but I've seen some people put her name up there though. I don't think it's going to be a woman. I think it's going to be a man. I do. And after I saw Tim Scott, I was like, God, dog it. He's gonna make Tim Scott his VP. I hope not. He's gonna make Tim Scott his VP. Be uh, yeah, because all these years he ain't getting he ain't getting engaged. But how many vice presidents go in there? And, and unless you're on the West Wing or um, um, House of Cards, you usually don't see, see single vice presidents. South so, Carolina is funny. They yeah, got they weird ducks coming out of South Carolina, man. Yeah, well, what's do. going on down there, man? Yeah. Well, we know that Nikki's not going to win South Carolina either, but she will stay in until um, until uh, Super Tuesday. I think she, in this last week, I think Nikki Haley has destroyed her future in politics. She didn't have anything after. That's she, true. I mean, That's true. You know, I thought about that, too. I was like, she was out of work. She might have been making that money, Jay, uh, for whatever deals it was, but she was really out of work after she left that ambassadorship. So, you know, but well, she went to work for Boeing for eight million or whatever. So, but be careful how you go after. Her. Be careful because you can say she's not qualified and whatnot, but all she has to do is say one thing: "But why did Trump hire me?" Right. Be careful. Be careful how you be careful how you go after this woman that way because she's she gonna be like, Well, what why'd you hire me? And why did we get all this stuff done when I was ambassador? Well, see, I think so. Nikki though is a prime example of she got into the politics, and I'll mm -hmm. say maybe she got into it for the right reasons, or maybe she became the ambassador, but just kind of like DeSantis on the run up to re-election, sold out to the establishment. Nikki left her ambassadorship to go into the military industrial complex. Now, whether right. that was her plan all along or whether, you know, she just decided on that. But I mean, you can see a trajectory where it's like, okay, here's a promising politician. Oh, there's the money. And just like hard left turn. See, I think it's, I think it's more devious than that. I think cause she was pretty effective at the UN for a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I, I think what happened is she got snatched out of there. Right. You somebody, think so? somebody, I mean, maybe not forcibly, but somebody from Raytheon or Boeing that, that realized if we keep this woman in here, we're not going to have any wars, went and said, hey, I'll give you $10 million if you come over here. Boom. You can run for president after that. Boom. 
These people are devious, but I'm telling you, they are totally devious. Yeah, and we see it all the time where you see a young, promising member of the House of Representatives, like MTG, like she was crazy, but she went in like business owner, citizen, and now you can see that she just got sold out and she's spending 120000 on Kevin McCarthy's chapstick, you know? <laughs> and it's like she just, she got bought out by the establishment. She just it became that. And these people go into D.C., with noble of intentions. And then it's like, Hey, here's the checkbook. How much is it going to take? Or, Hey, we caught you diddling someone you shouldn't or whatever, whatever the lever is. And then, then the machine owns you. So you think when, when MTG puts that chopstick on, do you think she can taste Frank Luntz? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, um, again, they shared, uh, they shared it, you know, that's all. I'm right. Yeah. They pass it around, but, Back to, back to that um, stupid ass uh, um, suspension thing. The, uh, you know, he said. You know, he said. Well, I signed the pledge. I don't give a damn. Still, I mean, that whole worded four minute uh, monologue there. He, you didn't have to do that. I mean, I understand you probably wanted to look good. I mean. We heard that you and your wife were fussing up on the bus. You know, we we heard a whole lot of stuff. We heard a lot of some of your people are talking. You didn't. Oh, uh, you know what? And I understand why you would um, speak to your supporters because you want to shut them up. But some of them were talking. You you say that y'all didn't know what y'all were doing. It was a it was a clown show. Puzzle you know, guy. People. Huh? Puzzle guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Dude, yeah. You're doing a puzzle that? instead yeah. of. All right. All right. All right, guys. I, I, I got to, uh, just because Charlene uh, called it out, I got to go. Uh oh. I froze. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's, he's throwing shit at the screen. I know he is. Yeah. <laughs> You want to go out and come back in? It's, it's cold out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Ventrula, Chris. That's what it looks like. All right. So, <laughs> you like. Let's see. <clears throat> but yeah, the, the other thing we got to watch, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is uh, all these people that took the, the 30 pieces of silver. We're not going to forget that. You know, you bailed out. You bailed on us when we needed you, man. We remember that. Never yeah. going to forget that. You know, I was thinking, and I put on my Twitter last night. Um, raise your hand if you were here with Donald Trump since 2016. Uh, and I did that for a purpose. Is, is because there's still people. There's still a lot of people that still support Donald Trump, and they and they know the facts. And the facts are. He got in there for those that felt like that they didn't have a voice. A lot of people felt like that they weren't being heard. They weren't being heard by their by their politicians, their lawmakers, their representatives, and they still aren't. So, you know, he got up there. He was like, I'll do it. Came down the escalator, said, I'm running. Next thing you know, <gasps> running. He knows our secrets. He knows our secrets. You know, he he did this. Uh, okay, well, and I go back to something that um, Clinton said, or Clinton tried to tell people. Clinton tried to tell people this. He was like that um, Trump was dangerous. At at the beginning of that um, election year in 2016, they said, don't sleep on Donald Trump. He's dangerous. That's how the Clintons felt about him. Okay. So, and dangerous meaning... He could draw up a crowd quick. He's likable. Quick. He he um he, he doesn't play by the rules of politics. Quick. That's dangerous to the establishment. And we all saw it. We understand it. That's that's what we said we wanted. So when 2020 came around and we saw what was well, actually through 2016 and 2017, 2018, you cannot I mean they damn near just gave up 
a, 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 uh, I don't see a virus, but they gave a virus to the American people to get rid of the dude. So, I mean, uh, because everything that they threw at him, the kitchen sink of racist, this, racist, all, all that stuff didn't stick. It well, it didn't stick to people that really could think right. So, they're like, okay, fine. We'll just kick him out of office. And we'll send, uh, we'll add uh, two impeachments to, with him right out the door. Well, I don't know if we're going to have time for the second one. We'll rush it through. It don't matter. We'll rush it through. Make him two-time impeach. He'll he'll never get uh, uh, he'll never get elected again. Then when he got out and he saw, well, it's okay. We'll get him back there in uh, we'll get him back there in 2024. Get those indictments ready. How many? I don't care. hundred. <laughs> We're getting on something, something. And it keeps escalating. Like now we're yeah. at, if, I, I know you guys saw the Alex Soros tweet. Right. You know, with the with the bullet hole through the glass, number 47. It's like, can we please arrest this guy? Mm. You know, do we have a loyal secret service? You got to wonder. I That's still maintain 30% chance he, he doesn't make it till the, uh, to the election. Well, the good part is he knows this too. Right. You know, so I'm sure there's been people after him before, but not at this level. Well, and I think if I had to guess, and I and before I froze up, I was going to give a shout out to uh, Candace, loyal viewer of the show. Did DeSantis drop out so his votes go to Haley, trying to screw Trump over tin hat theory? Here's been my theory all along. The DeSantis campaign, the establishment convinced him to run. He ran a campaign that was never intended to win. Like all of us look at this and go, this is not a winning strategy. All it was designed to do was to give the never Trump base a place to go. And they all went there. All the establishment cronies, the Bill Mitchells, go through the influencers, Dave Rubens, all those guys went hardcore. Dave never Rubin Trump. has to be pulling his hair out right now. But go ahead. Right. And maybe we all get unblocked. Who knows? But um, but now you have now you have that 10 to 20 percent of the never Trump Republicans that had a place to go and they're looking for a home. And I always said that they were looking for the switcheroo. Like DeSantis was the lead blocker. Haley never directly attacked Trump. And then they were just going to try to shift that base to Haley. But I don't think they anticipated how nuclear Haley was where she's just unelectable. She's just terrible. And, and so I think now they're sitting there going, Oh crap, what do we do? We were going to take this DeSantis base, move it to Haley but now we can't take it to Haley because she's just there's no way, no path for her to win. That but base moved to Trump. Trump is over sixty percent in New Hampshire. You watch what happens. But I hope you're right. Here's the thing: when you hear us talking about Haley, that's coming from the right. We're not coming from the left, and we're not coming from the middle. Right. So I mean, honestly, we can say she's unelectable because that's the way we feel. That's the way we see it. That's the way we wish it. That's the way we hope. But if she connects, which I always thought that she was, I always thought she was dangerous. I, I thought she was dangerous coming out as governor and then going to the ambassadorship. I was like, oh, God. And I and I've said on the show, she got the um, bona fides. She got yeah. the bona fides. And, yeah. um, and, and, and I'm seeing that people are saying, well, yeah, you know, now she's using this brown thing and brown thing. You know what that brown thing started? It started a couple of days ago when the media started saying it. I read, I read this article that's out there right now that the Republicans are going after brown people so that they won't be in the White House. Talking about Vivette and her. That was in an article from somebody at, uh, I think it was MSNBC or NBC News, I guess what. But they were like, the Republicans, are, they don't want anybody brown in the White House. Look at what they're doing to the, the brown female and the brown young challenger in Vivek. And I was like, somebody's got to come out. And say something. I, I mean, I, I don't know. If, I mean, and um, if I find that, uh, if I find it, 
because I really don't get rid of my history too much. If I find it, I will share it here on the show this week. But I, when I saw it, I was like, well, look, look at that headline. I don't, I don't even remember I see this. I should have sent it to y'all, but I didn't because I was like, eh, you know, I didn't, whatever. But I was like, well, oh, damn, look at that. Okay. Yeah, that's what they do, you know. Yeah. I mean, she's, well, the you fake, see she's the fake one with the white name. I mean, her name is Nimrata Haley. It's not right. Nikki. You know, well, she's you the can, one faking it. You can see the left's attack now. I mean, they're trying to drag race out again. It's election time. Let's talk about That's racism. Let's talk about abortion again. It's election time. I, I mean, we see this every election cycle. We haven't talked about racism that much other than the right saying, like, let's eliminate DEI and that kind of stuff. But now that now that election season's back, hey, let's all talk about race. Nikki Haley is such a fraud that if she has any supporters left, they're idiots. Either that or they're Democrats. Because if have you guys seen the, the lie tapes where she says one thing and then she says another thing? I mean, it's like a long compilation right. of so many different things. She is phony as a $3 bill, man. Well, and the problem is she says what her handlers tell her to say which isn't necessarily what she thinks. That's why she's got to keep changing her story. You know, I mean, if we said something on the show and then if we were getting bankrolled and somebody says, oh, you can't say that. And the next show we come out and contradict ourselves. That's why she just hopes everybody. Forgets. And that's called being a whore. That's called being a whore. And, you know, that's why, and that's why I don't want Donald Trump to pick anybody that's in Congress. Here, here. Be because mm. they all are whores. Couple yeah. exceptions. There's a couple exceptions, not many, but to, I, I, man, to see Clay Higgins up <laughs> or okay. Byron Donalds, right. Byron Donalds. Okay, all right. Well, uh, well, I want to see what Byron. I want to see what Byron Donald had to say to Charlie Kirk before, before. Okay, because uh, if you caught up on TV US's stage, you really ain't gonna say anything about what he said about Martin Luther King, and. I still haven't forgot that either. I, I still haven't forgot that Martin Luther King, Charlie. I still haven't forgot that. I we shall meet one day. Um, let me. Uh, yeah. Um, we we have our sister Ayla Wang from the new federal state of China. We're going to bring her on in in just a few seconds. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to have more on um, the campaign um, situation. Uh, actually, we we belong over there. But I want to bring our little our little sister on. It's been a week since we've seen her. Hello, Miss Lady. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Jason. Hi, Hutch. How are you guys? Hello. Hey, How are you doing? Good. Good. Look, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up to speed on what's happening uh, because, as you know, you know we're going through this. Um, we're going through this primary on the, on the primaries have started uh one question to you you think china has any money behind nikki haley <laughs> well absolutely I, I think you know ccp strategy is trying to buy out everything and 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 use their monies to control medias to control your farmlands and and to control other properties and even through politicians right so if anybody found you know that the money ties back to the chinese communist party it wouldn't be a surprise to me well there's so many things going on i mean uh, the ccp's economy is uh there's problems with the stock market and everything else um but but something that's uh really pressing you're hearing uh, a lot of reports out of the red sea area and the houthi rebels and, and and attacks on shipping um and the houthis came out from yemen the other day and pretty much gave the ccp and the russian navies a pass uh that none of your ships will be uh will be attacked or anything like that any insight on that ayla Absolutely, Hutch. Well, before you know, we we go to the Red Sea problem. The the stock market, you know, literally hit on on uh, lots of investors. And it's funny, uh, you know, when you mentioned that because days is before the stock market went down that the prime minister of the Chinese Communist Party actually addressed on the Davos Forum, uh, saying that China's economy was actually growing yeah. in twenty uh, in twenty twenty three, yeah. and then he said that the growth was actually kept as a five percent, five point two percent. 
Uh, and he even mentioned that there are more than 400 millions of Chinese people who are categorized as middle class um, uh, families and, and middle class individuals in, in China, which is a completely lie um, to the investors. Um, you know, on the other hand, uh, the prime minister also address uh, you know that investing uh, er, they're, they're calling for foreign investments to China they're saying that your investment in China would not be a challenge but a opportunity uh, you know you, you 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 can tell that how much they fear about decoupling from the Chinese Communist Party and they understand that the foreign investments that is actually leaving the Communist China and this is primarily why you know he was utilizing that opportunity to actually lie to the foreign investors and even calling for more investments by giving out the fake data. And, and, and second, you know, with the Red Sea problems, it is absolutely worth noticing that when people saying that they're giving, you know, a favorable pass to the ships from the Communist Party and Russia, and on the other hand, all of the other, you know, shipping uh, methods were being attacked or were being blocked. So what has been supplied from the Chinese Communist Party to the Red Sea and what ties that the CCP has. We, remember, we talked about you know, how the Chinese Communist Party utilized the Belt and Road initiatives to supply their monies, trades to all those politicians and so that uh, the Chinese Communist Party would be able to establish their shipping uh, bases, their spy bases and their biological weapon labs throughout the, the, the participant countries so that the CCP could expand their forces and their power into these countries and then leverage these powers and strategies to defeat the United States. So it, it you know, it, it's sort of like they are giving out, you know, their, their ties with the CCP and Russian onto the table. They're saying that, yes, we have deals with the Chinese Communist Party so that we will protect the ships from the CCP. You know, Ayla, it's it's fascinating, and we love having you guys on the show because you do such great breakdowns. And I, I gotta ask for a little speculation, a little feedback on from you guys. So, so I remember in 2019, I started hearing these reports out of China about this mystery disease, and then that turned out to be COVID 19. That was the whole story of 2020, still to this day. And then it's kind of calmed down. People have kind of got over it, and we've been talking about how they're gonna fire it back up for the next election. Only this time, they're going to try to make it more totalitarian. And now I'm starting to, as you see in the spider web, you start seeing mentions of disease X and this highly contagious pathogen. And then you also are seeing now the World Health Organization is trying to get ahead of it and get this treaty in place. And and all, all the things, the center of it seems to be Chinese Communist Party. So take our audience through kind of what you guys know, what what disease X is and how they're trying to leverage organizations like the World Health Organization and, and that sort of thing to kind of set the trap, so to speak. Absolutely, Jason. And if you look at that report from the New York Post, uh, you'll find that the WHO did not specify one disease as disease X. They right. say that the, the, the disease X actually begins from COVID-19 and they believe there are more uh, lethal viruses would be coming out. And that's why they're calling out uh, the countries to participate in a pandemic treaty. But on the other hand, the Chinese Communist Party did release uh, several reports on, on a new research finding saying that they're finding a new uh, virus, which was lab created. Um, and, and this virus is deadly 100 percent on uh, humanized mice um, in the in the in the lab. And so look at this. They're utilizing their biological weapon warfare networks and if we remember that when the first time, you know, when the new federal state of China and the whistleblowers movement calling out the origin of the COVID-19 virus came out from the Wuhan P4 lab, Miles also said in his broadcast that for anybody who had visited that P4 lab, you, you would saw that slogan in front of the P4 lab and saying that once you enter this lab, you're entering the Pandora box of the Chinese Communist Party. You know, speaking of that virus, let me play the Davos. You only see that no one in there ever tells the truth. I can tell you the absolute truth is that do not allow you have ivermectin, not allow you take artemisinin, not allow you use hydroxychloroquine is 100 percent totally tellable, a great crime against mankind. Behind that criminal force are just several swamps that can be traced. 
Who controls ivermectin? Oh, For the Davos, you only see that no one in there ever tells the truth. I can tell you the absolute truth is that do not allow you have ivermectin, not allow you take artemisinin, not allow you use hydroxychloroquine is 100% totally tellable a great crime against mankind. Behind that criminal force are just several swamps that can be traced. Who controls ivermectin? Who controlled hydroxychloroquine? Who controlled this approach to zinc at the time? Dr. Beard, Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, is right. But no one expects who is behind this to control it and not allow you talk about it. The accomplices are the three media, Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, 100% only these few plus three and no more than 10 with this conspiracy. They are definitely insiders like CNN, BBC, etc. Secondly, there are only four governments in the world have the authority to make that decision. The U.S. and Europe, which are responsible for that matter, and there are two or three people in the U.S. and Europe, a total of two or three people, and that's six people, that is 40 or 50 co-conspirators. What is achieved? There are only two. They feel they have to wipe out the insurance premiums that the swamp owes, the 7.5 billion people that the swamp can't tolerate, the ones that won't listen to them, and even to revolutionize the ones that are still awakening and the ones that there are too many more that are going to be living the good life, and so they only let you get vaccinated. The fear of the virus is for everyone to get vaccinated. I was the first to say to the humanity on the planet that the virus isn't the most dangerous, but vaccines are the disaster. Vaccines are the objective. Ivermectin and artemisinin are the swamp's worst nightmares and killers and have left clues for everyone to find the swamp, just like in the movie They Can't Get Away. All those bigots from the Davos Forum and the media will absolutely be subject to human justice by 2025. And the Chinese of NFSC are the greatest, the happiest, the sunniest, the newest, not swampy, the power of the sun and the sunny power in the world. He's a bad man, boy. And you know what, too? Listen, um, Ayla, listening to him do this before he went in, Probably a couple of years before he went in, but I it's still not right to to any of us. But I can see why he's a dangerous man. You know how they wouldn't allow him to have uh um uh a bond and and the judge came out and said that she didn't trust him or uh something like that. I understand why they don't want him out on the street because he going to talk. He going to talk and he is one straight shooter. Uh and I and I I know y'all are proud of him. Do you have any information on him um what's coming up with his trial? Do you have anything? Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I, well, public files have shown that, uh, you know, the trial has been postponed to May the 20th um, this year. Uh, and we did want to leave, you know, a, enough space for uh, his criminal defense uh, team to have a good space and, and for them to work on uh, and, and to work for miles. We fully believe into, um, you know, the justice process. We fully believe into that the United States will allow, you know, that the mission, this mission to be achieved. So, you know, at this moment, um, I would follow the guidelines from his criminal defense team that uh, we would want to preserve more, uh, you know, discussion spaces for the attorneys. Uh, but, you know, feel assured that Miles has 100% confidence in uh, his case. He understands when he came in, and if you look at, you know, his videos back in, you know, several years, uh, before that he, he he knows what challenges are ahead of this road and he's willing to take that risk uh, so that, you know, that taking down the Chinese Communist Party would m make it meaningful for more Chinese people and even American people in this country. So we would share the same belief and our spirits are always with Miles. Oh, that's good. He, I, I hope he's doing all right. I really do. Um, he's so prophetic. I would add one more person to that list of people to watch. I was looking into something uh, about the FDA pushing the vaccine on children. And, and if you look at the the commissioner of the FDA, I put his name in the private chat, Ayla. But I'd love to see some investigation on Robert M. Khalif, MD. 
a former big time pharma guy that's now responsible for the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, I'd like to see if the CCP has their talons in him because I'll bet they do. And that guy's causing a lot of damage. But that being said, that's for the future. Um, if you could talk a little bit, I thought that these spy balloons were gone, but apparently we're They're noticing back. more. Uh, what's an update on that? These things keep coming. Absolutely, Hutch. And I appreciate that you mentioned the name of that big guy in the FDA. I would tell, uh, you know, a little story from Miles' previous uh, broadcast that when the whistleblowers movement saved one scientist from, you know, uh, people who have worked for the P P4 labs, that this scientist actually confirmed with Miles that uh, scientists are afraid of going into the United States and testifying uh, uh, their knowledge about CCP and about how CCP has strategized uh, the biological weapons because they understand that there are ties between the United States with the Chinese Communist Party um, and in developing the, the P4 lab and developing the virus. And this is primarily why when this scientist reached out to Miles, their request was was not to go to the United States. Their request was not to testify in, in the United States. They actually fled to um, Europe to find a safe country. And, 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 you know, so this is a vivid proof of how much how much that these scientists knew from just within that they understand there are traders within the United States who allowed this project to, to take place. Um, and absolutely, I think we have more and more investigation that needs to be conducted. And going back to, you know, the spy balloons that Taiwan recently spotted six more spy balloons from the Chinese Communist Party. And it's weeks after their Taiwanese presidential elections. The Chinese Communist Party never stopped their efforts in intimidating this island. And it can tell, you know, that the Chinese Communist Party had never changed their mind in taking over these islands. And their military aggression just became stronger and stronger. More spy balloons every week. And even one of the balloons even across the island. You know, I, I got to say for a, a shout out for our audience and for the new federal state of China, you know, we show that Miles Go video and you're, you're just sitting there and you look at the date stamp on it and how many years ago it was, and it just blows your mind because he's like a fortune teller because these whistleblowers told him what the plans were and, and do it. And if you haven't done so, go on go on their, their website, go on their social media. This stuff's going to blow you away because Miles saying stuff in 2018, 19, and, and it's all the stuff that comes to fruition. So I really hope he's right about the 2025 where we get to hold people accountable personally. Um, but but on to another piece that you guys do a nice job. So the Davos Forum, they're they're hyping up China's economic success. And every indicator we see is that it's all a house of cards. It's all smoke and mirrors and it's going to collapse. Can you kind of give some insight on that? Because because that info from Davos is going to hit the mainstream news and people are like, oh, China's doing great. All oh, their economy's good. And and how about you give them the real scoop on that so our audience knows? Absolutely, Jason. When the prime minister of the Chinese Communist Party said, you know, in the Davos Forum that the China's economic was growing last year, I want to ask a few questions, Ray. So who was a, the, the right version? Because the former prime minister who reported, you know, dead, uh, to, who reported to be dead uh, of a strange heart attack, told the Chinese people that more than 600 million of Chinese people earned less than 150 USD dollars per month. And now the current prime minister came out saying that there are more than 400 billion of Chinese people who are categorized as the middle class uh, income. Uh, and, and so who was the correct? They have always been giving different versions of stories and different data to confuse the investors. And on the other hand, if you look at the forum uh, you know, in general, the Davos Forum was not a forum that tells the major public the truth. When people from the Wall Street Journal and other mainstream media participated into that forum, what 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 has been delivered from uh, these mainstream media?s They were saying we own the news, and um, so that's in in some way that we own the truth. 
And but what's different from today is that our audience has more channels and uh, to investigate and to look for sources of information. And it became more and more challenging for this mainstream media to feed into the truth that they wanted people to believe. And so when the prime minister of the Chinese Communist Party says fake data about CCP's economy, the next day, CCP stock market went down. And it has become one of the biggest falling since the new year. And it has disappointed many, many investors. And on the other hand, the CCP was still calling out for further investment from other countries. And so what makes sense to the Chinese Communist Party? They're simply just following the propaganda guidelines of, of the communist Xi Jinping. They were simply afraid of telling the world to choose because they can't. And so all of these world-class forums were supposed to discuss major important discussion topics. They were not supposed to give out people fake data and give, give people fake news about it. But look at Davos Forum. It's all about power. It's all about money. It's all about inside transactions and, and lies to all of the investors. And one of the you know major problems here is that Today, if you look at even advanced cities in China, you found those work class people sleeping on the streets and they're asking for the factories to pay for their salaries before the Lunar New Year. And this is what happened in China, but no one talked about and even dared to mention that in, in that forum. And that is the problem. You know, um, before, um, before I let you go, didn't, um, didn't Xi, Xi, uh, Talk about the economy at the end of last year. He he was the one that really was talking about that. And I was like, wait a minute. Now the, the new federal state of China has been showing us and telling us about the economy and stuff. I was like, he's going to get found out sooner or later that that's not true. But they took that message to Davos. And I'm like, wow, they really continue to push that through. Give us... Uh, um, before I let you go, let people know how they can uh, um, follow New Federal State of China, follow you on social media, and give us some last thoughts before you go. Absolutely. Wayne. So New Federal State of China is active on uh, almost all, every platform. We're active on Getter. Please find us on NFSC TV or NFSC Speaks. And in terms of you know all of the fake data and the lies from the Chinese Communist Party, you look at how they treated their own citizens. When their citizens were sleeping on the streets, asking the factories to pay for their salaries before the Lunar New Year, you knew that investing into China is not a good deal. And, and look at all of these major hedge funds and, uh, who established their Asia bases used to be in, in Hong Kong. And mm -hmm. after the Hong Kong protest movement and the national security law, the first thing that they do is they, they move out their money into Singapore. They leave Hong Kong directly because they want to abandon the Chinese market. The reason is not because that you know that, that they don't want to deal with the Chinese market or they don't want to do business with Chinese people. The reason is that they understand that working or doing business under communist China, you're only feeding into a communist dictatorship regime that in the end, they will swallow your investment and they will they will cheat it on your investment and and you're only feeding into the CCP you're not doing business with the with the real chinese market so we demand a sharp and a fast decouple from the communist regime and that is the only way to save america's investments that is the only way to stop you know expanding the power of the CCP and to take them down and so that you will enjoy a, a liberated, a free, and a new Chinese market, which will be built on, on capital's will, which, which will be built on the free wills of the Chinese people. All right. Ayla, thank you so much, little sis. And um, we look forward to seeing you again. Tell our family over there we say hello. Thank you so much, Wayne. Let's take down the CCP. There you, go. you got it. Sounds like a plan. Ayla Wang from the new federal state of China. NFSC yeah. TV. That's a new one. Yeah. NFC too, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty solid. They yeah, got a yeah. ton of Miles Go videos. Yeah, is it, is it English or Mandarin? English. Well, they're subtitled. They're, yeah, they're switching things over to English, uh, sort of like 
sort of like that video than what right. you what you just saw. Because at first I was like, okay, I wonder if I should play this. And I was like, well, they they probably wouldn't have it on their Twitter if it wasn't English related. Um, not a whole lot of things are happening. I mean, it seems like they got some fights going on at Fox. Fox and Isn't it interesting that um, after all these court cases, Donald Trump's wrapped up in and what the and every single case has been brought on by a Democrat and the Republican Party, the Republicans say, you know what, we might not have voted for Trump before, but we are so tired of the Democrats doing this and our government uh, controlling what what happens in our lives. And, and there's nothing you can do about it if you're a Republican, because it's all controlled right. by the Democrats. And now the Republican Party is saying we like him even more because what we're seeing happening to him is not fair. Deucey's. Chopping at the bit. <laughs> they always send my man out to the diner. He never gets a break. He's been to every diner in the New England. I, I know. I hope he gets to eat at them because a lot of those plates look really awesome. And you know what, too? Just a while ago, I could have swore somebody was cooking something over in in my um in my office because I heard some plates over here. I'm like, damn, where the plates the, the plates are where he's at. All right. There, and that could happen to any right. one of us. Well, I, I, I'll tell you this. Yeah. While the Republicans are, are trying to figure out who uh, the nominee is going to be here in New Hampshire and elsewhere, you know what uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to do this week? They've got a number of events talking about reproductive rights, because even though we're talking about stuff like <laughs> right now, ultimately what the Democrats are going to run on closer to uh, November is Dobbs and how former President Trump uh, was able to get three justices on the Supreme Court overturned uh, reproductive rights. Now it's up to each and every state. It's all part of federalism, but it is such an effective tool. Every time the Democrats have run on that, they have won. It's interesting, Margaret and so, Brennan, yeah. And, and I'll just add this as well, Brian. Uh, <laughs> I think, and we've talked about this on the couch, of the Republicans, Nikki Haley has got the best argument about Dobbs and abortion that we have heard in this Women cycle. liked her response on the debate stage that well, day. Said, but a lot of evangelicals did votes. not. She's never going to get 60 votes. Yeah, she said she's for irrelevant. whatever can pass. Right. And the other thing to keep in mind, reproductive rights, as you know, Steve, is a spin. Freedom. It's pro-abortion. I mean, you're pro-abortion, right. yeah. Oh, you're talking about this. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, yeah. It's not talking about. about. How about well, that? Uh, you know, uh, that's what they're going to talk about. But I'm wondering if they need a plan B at this point when you see the Middle East on fire, the border uh, bo uh, broken Inflation. in every shape of the word. Inflation, as well as the northern border, too. I did a quick story over the weekend when I saw it. I saw it on Saturday. I saw this story headline that Democrats were going to do that, right? They should. And uh, I went to the website. They have a website up. They even have Carrie Lake's photo up there. And it's called GOP on abortion. It has videos and stuff about how the GOP feels about abortions and all that stuff. And I was like, uh-oh. So when I did the story real quick, I was like, okay, well, this is this is where this is where we're going. And not 24 hours later, the Dems put out a video about abortion with Biden and Kamala Harris. I said, okay, well, anyways, no time. That but, was Steve Ducey committing yeah. election interference for Murdoch. Basically. That's what it was. He brought that yeah. up. I'll tell you, if you're on a national race for anything and you get asked by anybody, including your Democrat opponent, about abortion, you tell them, this is the United States of America. Please call your governor. Yeah, yeah. It's I have nothing to do with that. Yeah, exactly. We, it, yeah. We've identified that on the show for months after we got trounced. Abortion is a 50-50 issue in the nation, and it is a huge loser nationally for Republicans. Absolutely, because you can demonize us over it, just like that website. Right, and, and the best answer is, you know what? This is really a split issue in our country. There isn't a consensus. This should remain a state issue. So that's like the law. Said, that's go the talk law. To your governor. Yeah. And that's why Dems want it back up in DC is because it works better for them up there because then it's a national thing. It works. I don't want to sound crazy, but it works better for everybody else when it's 
back to the states because again that's what the united states is about that's exactly this state right. is for this that state is for that right. if you don't want to live in this state you can go live in that state that's that's how the 50 states are that's how america is but remember when i said when this thing passed or got overturned from the supreme court and i think y'all were here when i said i'm like and they did this too early. I don't know why they did it. I mean, it's kind of early in doing That's it. why they leaked it. That was a that was a Democrat leak. Yeah. Well, and the Republicans should have had the talking points ready. Which they should have, right? All that happened should have is learned 20 years ago. Issue. Right. Yeah. We should have learned right. about this. We never went on this issue. Yeah. Right. Amer America, by and large, I shouldn't say this, but Jesus, it's almost godless. This yeah. country doesn't care about life. And we are very pro-life. Yeah, Every one pro of us, if we got to choose, would vote pro-life. But the, but the fact of the matter is, as a country, it is a 50-50 issue. And that's why it should be a state issue. Because they have, they've managed to brainwash women in this country. Women that can't even get pregnant anymore. They've managed to brainwash them into thinking that murdering fetuses is health care for them. Right. And once they did that, once our women got too ridiculously dumb to figure out what was going on, now it's the biggest political issue that's going to cause our liberties to be taken away, all the rest of them. All the rest right. of them, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I was like, I saw what it could have done to the 2022 election, but I was like, no, nah, they set that up for 2024. That's, I mean, that's that's going to be their niche thing right there. I mean, it's not DEI, it's not IED, it's not UAV, any FBI, it's abortion. And they're going to go hard on that big time. And how do you knock it home? You get rid of Joe Biden and put a woman in his place. And and it, th that's where I come up with Kamala Harris. That's why she's in the video. They're going to attach this to her. She's going to go around talking on it. She Again, what what happens during a second, second term of a presidential campaign? Yes, the president comes out and says this thing, but the highlight is the vice president. The vice president, you'll be seeing her. Uh, a lot, a lot more frequently, and that's what she's going to be talking about. And, women, and, and, and there's a weapon. Choose. There's a weapon to use against her. She has to be pro-abortion because she's a freaking homewrecker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, she got a graveyard. She she ain't got a closet. She got a graveyard. But you have to. And 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 I, honestly, I was going to say that, but then I just thought about it. Listen, if if you're a female. And you want to get into politics, okay? You know it's nasty. You know it's crank. And that's just the way it is. You have, I mean, if they get hit hard, that's how it's played. That That's how politics is played. You can't have two sets of rules for a, man, a male and a female when it comes to politics, all right? Because then you have, uh, you have that woman from 2016 can say anything she wants to. I'm talking about uh, she ran for Republican side. Carly Fury, you can have her saying anything she wants to say, but you can't say anything on the same level back to her. You can't do it. It's the same, politics. same way with race. You know, it's, it's this whole thing. We, we got to kill this whole thing of you can only say this or you can only say that. Our founding fathers understood that. It was the very first thing they put in the Constitution, you know, yeah. and, and we're losing that. Yeah. Well, and I got to say, too, both race really and abortion, both race and abortion to me land in the same spot, which is not a thing that really needs to be talked about on the federal level. It's not a fix in the federal level. But what happens is, let's say we take something that the average Democrat and average Republican support, like ending the border. Congress, the border. Ending congressional stock trading. Simple one, everybody agrees on. I, I mean, look at the polling numbers. It's through the roof. You know, that should be something that somebody runs on. Right. Says, you know, hey, let's talk about ending congressional stock trading. Let's talk about securing the border. Let's talk, you know, whatever the things we want to 
talk about are, but instead they put out these polarizing issues that there is no national consensus on, and they no, just get you distracted. We trip right into it. Yeah, we trip right into it. Right. I, I want to just clarify so the audience understands this. I'm not pro-abortion. I am vehemently pro-life. I'm, I'm totally pro-life, but we can't win on it at the federal level. Stop talking about it. Let the governors talk about it. Or you go talk about it at the governor gubernatorial level. Right. Go do that. I watched that crush my governor here, my, my candidate, that between that and the Republicans not giving him money. But they sat up there every single day for 45 days talking about Doug Mastriano is going to kill babe or it's going to end abortion. And, and even for rape and incest, now that, that's the biggest bunch. If you follow those arguments, you are being played like a fiddle. I totally agree. I totally agree. And like you said, I mean, the, the morality in this country is so bad right now that you'd be like, man, I wonder, I'm, I wonder if anybody really gets that. Now, I know you've seen many people come, oh, yeah, but more people are, um, more people are awake or um, more people are waking up. Yeah, they're waking up, but they're not getting out of bed. And um, <laughs> that's the issue that we have. You know nice what I'm saying? I mean, nice one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I remember I remember a long time ago that uh, I had a preacher. Uh, preacher came in and uh, he, he had been there for a little bit. And one Sunday he was like, I'm getting ready to, to open up the doors of the church. But I want to say a message to all the saints. If you're a member here, don't come up here. Don't come up here. I'll tell you why. It seems like every Sunday when I open up the doors of the church, y'all run past the sinners to get up here to start crying and whining about what y'all did during the week. If y'all y'all come here every Sunday, y'all at um, y'all at choir rehearsal, you at you at uh, uh, weekly Bible study, y'all should have enough power to go to God and ask Him to forgive you instead of coming up here every Sunday. And crying and snotting, you know, because again, y'all are taking up spaces up here that sinners should be taking up. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all, I mean, uh, it's time for y'all to grow up and get off the milk and start eating meat. And that's where I'm going with that. It's time for people to get off of the milk and stop being coddled and get on the meat and get in the fight. That's what I'm saying. That, Or at least that's what I'm trying to say. Because there's just too many people out there, they 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 need uh, these influencers, these uh, these jacked up, these people getting these people getting paid off, y'all. Um, At they least they were, these, huh? At least they were. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, got there, huh? Got their paychecks revoked. You know, I'm some, looking to see some MAGA people waving flags here in a minute when the rent comes due. <laughs> and and that's nothing. Bill Mitchell's out there in his in his <laughs> drawers going, okay, where'd I put that MAGA shirt again? <laughs> hang, hang on, let, let me get my hat. What's that password? What's that password to get um to go fund me so I can get this thing rolling back up again? <laughs> right. Man, so so many people put themselves out there that they weren't uh, that they were going to. If the Santas dropped out, that they would support the Santa. I mean, and and supported Trump, that they would support Trump. That's what happened. Now these people are coming out and saying, "Nope, I can't do it." Guess what? Here's my thing to you: you don't have to. You don't have to. That's right. If 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 you've been watching the show, I'm not saying we don't need your vote. We don't have to have your vote. And, and, and just just a note on that too: um, your influence was proven in Iowa. You don't yeah. have any. Yeah, you don't have any. You don't. I mean, you gonna come back over here. Listen, Donald Trump is gonna get independent and Democrat vote. That's something that other Republicans can't do. They can't do it. They couldn't do it in 2016, and they can't do it now. Donald Trump ran against what seven, eight, nine people, nine, ten at not, least. Not one of them could have got the Democrat and the independent vote in 2016 like Donald Trump got it. That's right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I mean, I don't want to lie to you. The establishment Republican Party's dead. It is. If right. We didn't have they a could. dynamic 
almost third party candidate like President Trump. I mean, that's essentially he was a third party candidate that we should start calling him that. You know what? We should start calling him that. That is what he is. Right. But I mean, he joined the Republicans to because they align most with his values. But but I mean, if you put up Haley or Christie or Tim Scott or any of these clowns, I mean, it's Bush or I mean, it's Reagan Mondale. Only we're the Mondale end of it this time, folks. I mean, that's where the Republican Party is because they've done nothing as our country continues to spiral. I mean, right now you can kill babies. You can smoke as much weed as you want. You can sit there on your free freaking government money. And our, our political leaders on the right, let that happen. You can join the army and change your sex. Right. You can become <laughs> an immigrant that we invite you in. And then we give you free room board while you step over our veterans. And then we will pay for you to change your gender. $9,000 a month. And, right. and you don't have to work. Right. You don't have to work. We'll just give you nine thousand dollars a month. And Republicans of, of Wayne's that money happen. You know, of our money. It's yours. Was ours. Then we gave it to the federal yeah, government. Yeah, I'm really pissed off. <laughs> Mission yeah, <accomplished>. really. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen though. Listen to these people that took the thirty pieces of silver. Let's lay out exactly what they did. Exactly what you people did, and you know who you are, and we know who you are. Uh, yeah, we what know. you did, we have a dynamic that we have never had in this country since Abraham Lincoln. We have got a man that the whole country across geopolitical strata support, and we have a chance to take our government, and you people tried to sabotage it. Yep. Don't ever forget that. You people tried to wreck what we have for the first time since Abraham Lincoln a populist president that knows when things are wrong and knows when things are right. And you people took the 30 pieces of silver. Shame on you. Oh, and think back what Republicans did the first two years when he had the House, the Senate, when they knew Russiagate was bullshit and they were letting it just keep spin and spin and spin. It is, I mean, it is just. Think of the Republicans, Jason, that did it. Remember, That's there were I mean. so many. Yeah, there were so many. From we 2015 a, until today, man, half of Congress would be out. We no. had such a majority. We could have got done so many things, and Republicans stopped it. Yes, they did. And that's what I, to this day, I still can't get over it. And every time that y'all get close to the subject or whether y'all talk about the subject, it brings me back to this. I had never in my life seen members of Congress bolt while they were in power, leave. i never seen it. i never seen it. Co- close to 50. Close to 50. And they're while, y- while, while y'all were in charge, we're leaving. We're resigning. We were tiring. But you have a chance to, to, to redo that fundamental transformation bullshit. Tells you everything you need to know about them. And y'all left. Well, yeah, they left because they were getting money from their political action committee, big pharma, big tech, big military industrial complex, whomever. And they knew they couldn't support a populist agenda because that populist agenda it opposes this corporatist agenda. So they're like, I can't keep voting against this stuff or I'm going to get voted out. And I can't vote for this stuff because I'm going to lose my gravy train. So for them, they had no choice but to get out. Well, I have a I have another thing about that. They took they took that thirty pieces of silver, right? And nice corporate, wherever they or nice principal job, uh, secretary, superintendent of some school system, so that the Democrats could take those seats and impeach Donald Trump after uh, two thousand eighteen, which is basically what happened. I don't even know if it was that nefarious. I think they were just I, like the gigs up for me. I got to get I, out because because for the most part, um, they knew. I mean, the Democrats have already been talking about impeachment. They right. just didn't get the votes, and they needed to get it done. That the establishment needed to get it done before he got out of office. And the only way for them to get it done is I they control the Senate, but they didn't control the House. And the only way for them to do it was to control the house. 
That's the only way. And for, somehow they did it. Nancy Pelosi took that gavel, and it was on after that. I mean, right after um, the 2018 election, they got down to it. They um, this is this is Adam Schiff, and this is his um, penguin buddy uh, uh, Nadler. Nadler, and they're going to be um, starting. The impeachment. Let me introduce you to Alexander Vindman, war profiteer and whistle. Yeah. Victoria Newland over here at the State Department, uh, honorable. Man, they got to it. They got busy. Not like ours. Well, and guess who helped them? them? Guess who helped them? Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Paul Ryan. Yeah. You oh. mean all these people that are beholden to all these big corporations? They wanted to get rid of a populist president? That's so weird. Yeah, well, could never happen in America. Right. It's lovely. Either way, you know, I I <laughs> um back to back to the Santas. Uh the reason why he left is because he sucks as a national and, and um uh don't think about coming back in 2028. And I'm telling you that right now. Hell don't no. think about coming in 2028. And I know you might be listening to so many people out there, you ain't get you ain't getting voted in in the next two elections, um, the next two presidential elections. Actually. Learn to code, man. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you blew it. If Florida re election, you you're, you're not getting in. But I tell you what, though, guys, the yeah. twists and turns we're going to see from the Uniparty over the next eight, nine months are, I think their plan kind of got screwed up. You know, I think Big they were time. like, hey, it, big time because Nikki was so bad. I think if Nikki was not as terrible, I think you would have seen a lot of the DeSantis people just naturally gravitate over there. But Nikki's kryptonite. She's and I think that's man. why they don't know what to do with it. You know, it's going mean? to be funny. And, you know, I got to ask you guys about this representative Massey. All right. I've always been leery of libertarians. I always have. Uh, I support them like 70%, but they just have a something about. Lib libertarian politicians why would he come out and say this we're in the fight of our lives especially libertarians this summer trump's indictments are going to ripen into convictions i mean massey even if you think that why would you say that why would you come out and put that on paper that's not something that that's not a fighter that's a punk that says something like that we got to learn how to fight i mean it if we have any chance of doing anything in this corrupt government. We have, you know, you, you hear the stories about retribution and Trump wants to get revenge. You're damn right. He wants to get revenge. Look at what they did to all of us. They with the COVID and everything else. There has you to know be retribution. Too, you know what too? Um, I'm the fire that the fire, the fire that you just used. I hope, I hope he still keeps that because you, you know what we saw after he got elected after 2016, uh, where he, he would lock her up, lock her up, lock her up, and then he changed his mind, and then he shocked us. The fire that you are using right now, I hope that he keeps that. He, I hope so, too. Okay. I, th I think he learned a lot of lessons, man. I mean, Because so. if know. you think about it, Wayne and Jason, at least speaking for myself, I learned a lot of lessons during the Trump presidency yeah. that I had no idea were that bad. Well, I, I think a couple things. I think Trump thought, didn't realize how bad the Republican Party was, and none of us did. Anybody that says, oh, I knew, like, I was an anti-government guy from way back. And to see how the Republicans caved on everything once they got power was mm -hmm. shocking to me, even. Thinking they were just a feckless, money-grabbing machine. And, and so that was, that blew me away. But the other thing is, is that Trump, yeah. Did I piss that guy off? You're right. FJB. <laughs> no. FJB. <laughs> but uh, but I got to say, the other piece to that <laughs> is Republicans. I, I mean, it, it's all on the table now, and, and it's all being exposed, and we're in uncharted territories because a large number of Americans see the corruption. With regards to mass That's what we hope, right. On both right. sides. Right. That's what we hope, though, and 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 that's why I said when when you hear us talk like this, we're talking from a the the right side of politics. When when we're talking like this, we hope that that's happening. Um, Jay talks to his friends in his 
um, in, in his close circle up in Minnesota. Hutch talks to his friends in oh, his friend, circle. Friend, I don't, I don't friend, know. Friend, friend, friend. Okay. So we hope that that's happening. Now, when, I mean, I have, I have, um, I have liberal room. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got a message um, about my mom. Just wanted to, uh, that's why I said room. <laughs> She, um, real quick, uh, she's she's been falling a lot. Oh no, yeah, she's been falling a lot, and they've been finding her in the floor. Uh, so, uh, you know, go down over the weekend and see and see what's going on with that. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, what was I talking about? Well, just to finish the thought, too, on Massey, and I don't know what context Massey said. Guys, Trump's going to get, we've been saying it all along, Trump's going to get convicted of something before the election. Yeah, yeah. He's let me tell you, I, I, let me give you a little context. Representative Thomas Massey, Republican Kentucky, a surrogate for Governor Ron DeSantis, said. Right. I'm saying they were campaigning against that that was what that was part of their argument for trump or DeSantis instead of trump right. i'm just saying for all of us on MAGA, i hope the the they there is plans in place for how they are going to handle when trump gets convicted because i don't think any of the convictions stand up i think they get overturned i think trump's innocent i think the charges are bullshit i think all that but if you, I, I don't think he's going to get through all these juries without, I mean, even mm -hmm. look at what's going on in Atlanta. Fannie Willis, turns out she hired a dude who she was screwing to, to prosecute the case, who met with the White House several times. She paid him double what they could have paid the lead RICO lawyer in the state. She was then getting taken on trips by this guy she was given this money to. I mean, all this is corrupt as hell. Governor Kemp won't even investigate it. And, and it's like you see the receipts and you're like, what? And you got to wonder, you know, all of these cases will eventually, if they are convictions, end up at the Supreme Court. Correct. And, it, and at the Supreme Court, the thing that scares me is in the 1860s, the Dred Scott decision, the Supreme Court thought that they were going to calm tensions in the country and voted that black people were property, not people. The Supreme Court of the United States did that and precluded the electorate to elect Abraham Lincoln and us to go to war. Don't forget, Abraham Lincoln was a third-party candidate. Right. Well, mm -hmm. and let's put it in perspective, too. We've been, we've been talking about this for months. Their end goal between now and the election is going to be going after the Supreme Court, expanding the Supreme Court. I fully expect that that is going to be part of part of what happens between now and election time. You know, you're going to get the Trump being on the ballot thing gets overturned. You know, hopefully it's a 9-0 decision, but that means they'll have to sculpt it as a very soft decision to get the liberals to agree to it. And I, I mean, some of this other thing, like, you know, just the RICO charge, I mean, all that, it's all going to end up at the Supreme Court. And then if the Supreme Court overturns it, the left is just going to go hog wild. Like, oh, let that, you know. I think in Georgia, I think in Georgia, they're going to force Kemp's hand. I think that, one's too, that one's too strong. Who's, Who's going to force his hand? The people the in Fed? Georgia. The people in Georgia. He's the governor, though. I mean, I mean. Um, well, he's got a whole big legislature, in. too. Huh? He's got a whole big Republican legislature, too. That That a lot of them agree with him. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I, that, I that's just my opinion. I don't know that much yeah, about no, Georgia right, right, politics. Yeah, no, no, I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm but, oh, Georgia person. politics. One of, one of my partners on the American Tribune lives in Georgia. It is like the biggest shit show ever. It's like Washington D.C. bad for the Uniparty and all that stuff. So it's yeah. I have very low, very low expectations for uh, for that to be a thing. But but my thing is and. And Hutch, you were talking about the Supreme Court. My thing is this about the Supreme Court. The reason why they worry me is because, and and this is this is a conservative led court. They keep on kicking stuff out down the road or kicking stuff back. They don't want to touch stuff. There was uh they got something on Roberts, man. I don't know what it is. Well, I do know what it is, but it's bad. 
it was a transgender uh, bathroom situation. This is a conservative led court. And they sent it. I mean, they said, we don't even want to look at it. So it's so it's going back to the state, which allows trans, trans, transgenders to use. The well, let's bathroom. put this in perspective. You're sitting on the Supreme Court. You got a lifetime appointment. Let's say you're just not corrupt. Let, let's take that off. Let's just say you're just a normal guy. You are, you know, you're Brett Kavanaugh. You see protesters outside your house. You see a dude showing up to kill you that got arrested. You see none of that happening. You see all these riots, nobody on the left. I, I mean, you're. It, it, that's how Chauvin got convicted in Minnesota. It was just pure jury intimidation. They knew what would happen if they voted the other way. How, who got? Well, Derek Chauvin in Minnesota. There is not a single person who could have served on a jury <laughs> in Minnesota I, and I, I, and voted okay. not guilty. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You know, it's more. What's the youngest school girl you've ever been with? Oh, and have you been done on the Lena Express? I know that Donald Trump. <laughs> That that was um that was up there in New Hampshire. What was the question? Uh, <laughs> really? Uh the I question here. What's the youngest schoolgirl you ever been with? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Nikki and, Haley question. And look, the only reason why I'm laughing about it is because of what he said about accepting um Ron DeSantis. That's your penance for saying some stupid shit right there. <laughs> He said, no, I mean, we'll accept him with open arms. No, he won't. No, he won't. Send him back to and but but when I was when I was creating that graphic, I went to go look. I put DeSantis and uh Gates name. I put them beside each other. And I looked at Google Images and I'm like, this dude has been with DeSantis for the longest. No wonder he said that. He's from Florida, sure. Yeah, but I mean, but he's been in DeSantis camp for the longest. I mean, he looked young in some of those photos with Ron DeSantis. I was like, oh, damn, no wonder. I mean, I get it. I get it why he was sad because now he's trying to make good with Ron DeSantis. Uh, I'll say this about some of those, some of those people down there in Florida, especially um liberals. Uh Y'all getting ready to get Hurricane Ron and because uh, he's pissed off. He's likely to cut off water of all Democrats when, when he gets down there. He, man. Or he might call the FBI and tell them to invade Donald Trump's house again. You never know. Or the health department or the electrical department or so. <laughs> Mar Lago's fixing to get inspected. <laughs> Something's wrong with the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Listen. Politics. Tomorrow is a New Hampshire primary. We're gonna have our uh, we're gonna have our percentages and everything, and we're gonna break it down for you. And uh, I think I think we're gonna have uh, Angel on too. I think. Good deal. Good. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. She she's living up there. As a matter of fact, she told me she had texted me during the show. She was like, she's getting all these robocalls, uh, a dozen a day. And, uh, but uh, she says uh, she, she says she's independent. But um, yeah, she uh, she she used to be part of part of the sh well, actually, she's still part of the show in the spirit. But um, y'all remember Angel, and uh, we're gonna try to get her back tomorrow for a little bit to talk about up there in New Hampshire and uh, uh, the 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 Democrats switching over to vote for Nikki Haley, if that's the case. She's one uh, of those ones that goes out there and goes to Barney Frank's office. Oh, yeah. yeah. And talks to him, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 Big time. All right. Final thoughts. Jason, give me some last thoughts. Then Hutch. Hey, uh, first off, uh, folks, thanks for prayers. A lot of people sent me notes about my dad. Came out double stents. He's back home doing well. Uh, so that was awesome. And then just needed to share a fun. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What happened with what happened with your dad? 
Well, he had, uh, I was saying on Friday how, or Thursday, how I had to get out because I had to go see dad. He was having, uh, he had double stents put in his legs. So oh. he evidently had two things in his arteries that were clogged up. So I went down there, made sure he was okay after surgery. And then we went down and it's like two hours away. So it's kind of a, okay. kind of a pain, but we got him home and he's doing great now. So, Good. so thanks. A lot of people sent me some notes on that. Uh, second thing is gateway pundit broke the story uh, over the weekend. I have not fact checked the validity of it, um, but I saw it on some law sites. I just haven't had time yet to go look. Uh, evidently in court last Friday in a Georgia court election integrity expert Garland Favorito uh, and J. Alex Haberman demonstrated how you can hack a Dominion machine. Oh, yeah, right in front now, of them. Yeah, right in front of them, right in the court. Now, I have not verified the validity of any of that. I'm just saying what I read. So any social media platform, I am not claiming it's true. Uh, but I will say this, shout out to the Trump campaign. If in fact that's true, and they said you can use a pen or a $10 data clip or or something to to do it, and you can change the votes right in front of you. I want the next Trump rally once he's secure, or the first Trump rally once he secures the nomination to be Donald Trump on stage with the pen and the <laughs> machine changing it. Say, hey guys, remember when everybody was causing all this drama about this? Let me show you how these machines work. Anyways, over to uh, All right, so let me, uh, I, I want to say, so it's going to change the subject a little bit here. Uh, and this goes on the, the Jew hatred that's being evident across the world. And Wayne's favorite president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, uh, was the supreme commander of the Allies uh, as we moved into Europe and started discovering these uh, concentration camps. And with the, the, the word that 20% or so of Gen Z or Gen X or whatever doesn't even think the Holocaust happened, Eisenhower was smart enough to realize that that was going to happen. So what he did when he liberated the first camp, he went and saw it personally. And he made every soldier in the vicinity come and see it personally. He wow. interviewed all of the people that were captive. And then he forced all of the people that lived in the towns surrounding those camps to come in and see everything and make them bury the dead. And then he brought TV cameras and army cameras in and filmed everything. And then he went to Congress and brought congressmen over to look at these camps. That's how you do it. There's solid proof, ladies and gentlemen, it's out there. I would say find a video of the liberation of one of these camps and put it on DVD because they're going to try to take them off. Uh, just a, a thought off the wall I thought I'd throw out there that I came across, Wayne. Love that. That's my boy, Eisenhower, boy. I, I, I mean, you remember you remember when we used to elect or have presidents that had some military background or something? This country was a whole Almost lot Almost all of them. Almost all of them till Clinton. Yeah, till Clinton. And then America started saying, well, you know, I mean, we don't need some. I mean, he's... We don't need somebody that's been in the military because he commands the military. And it's like, man, this country, whatever. I um, put something out uh, last night, and I wanted to say it again. Uh, thank God for uh, Hutch Baylor Jr. and Jason Robinson uh, uh, for being out in front of a whole lot of this stuff that's going on. Uh, I see other people thanking other people out there. Uh, Oh, yeah, I see other people thanking other people and all that mess, but uh, I want y'all to give a shout out and I want you to give a follow too to um, Hutch and J Rod. Uh, so, uh, because when they, uh, them even coming on the show and having their faces up here speaks volumes too, because they aren't hiding who they are and they're telling you what they believe in and how they believe it. And, and they're also finding stories to talk about and explain things. And you're getting raw opinion from these individuals, too. They, that's one thing that we don't do on the show is, like, I don't send them exactly stuff that I want to talk about because raw opinion is always the best is always the best opinion. When you write some stuff down, you sound like Ron DeSantis did yesterday during that speech. Uh, but when you listen or <laughs> – when, when you see me ask them a question and you look at their faces and the wheels are turning, 
because they're thinking about oh, damn okay uh okay this is I'm unscripted a, folks exactly right, right right we we get the title <laughs> so i mean i mean for me for me is great because you know you're working with individuals that can not like that 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 can right off the top of their heads speak on whatever they need to speak on and before i go or before we go that also lets you know that they are up on the news that's going on too because if they weren't up on our news then yeah i don't know nothing about that but i'll say 98 99 percent of the time they know exactly what i'm talking about so or had a lot of practice a lot of practice jason back in the day i used to get a text from wayne about five, six minutes before the show. Hey, James Fleischman from Michigan's going to be on. <laughs> I love Who the F is James Blaycott? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so you got to practice. Too, I, I love being on this show and love talking with you guys because I always learn something and like something to check out and. And I hope our audience gets that too. And it and it's so funny. I, one last dad story before I go. So we were down there, and I and like my dad, he voted for Joe Biden. I love him to death. Ex military. I have no idea. And then we're sitting in. We got him settled into his chair, and he had a stance. And he sits down, and he gets comfy. And I go to turn on the news. Freaking MSNBC pops up, and I'm like, Dad, what are you gonna do for the next whatever? And he's like. Oh, I just watch, I watch this all the time, and I'm like, oh my god, so much more makes sense now, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me let me show you a video, something you might not have ever seen about January 6th or Trump drink bleach. Like, let's go down all the hoaxes. That's <laughs> Alex Jones. But yeah, yeah, he was he was calling me like he's called me a crazy conspiracy theorist, and I'm like, well, let's see the first fine people hoax, and I just play the video. He's like, wait a second, that can't be true because I've been hearing for five years that. Oh, sorry, Dad. Minnesota. 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 All right. Baby. Tomorrow, New Hampshire, Angel Fleming, I think. So y'all have a great evening. God bless.